So, tips and tricks. Um, this was a proposal we came up with yesterday, which was, um, I've got these two lists over here, with seven sheets. I've got the same thing happening over here, set parameter by name. But over here you can see that when I try and get the parameters off the same sheet, I've got two different sets of things. This one I'm getting one, two, three, four. This one I'm getting one, 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 one. Why is that happening? I took a minute or two to work this out. Um, the problem is that you can just about probably see that this, I have an enlargement. The top list is just a list of sheets. The bottom list is a list of a list of sheets. So it's nested one deep. And what happens, you quite often get this effect um, when you are calculating with lists. You get a little nesting you, not, you don't want, and then odd things happen. It can be hard, quite hard to work out what's going on. Which thing, thing to be careful of is your nesting of your lists, and make sure you're addressing the list at the right level. Um, for advanced list manipulation, the newest things are list at level and replication guides. Replication guides are these little uh, triangular things in code blocks. Uh, list at level is this business with this stuff here, this at Miro and these things here. Um, quite recent innovation in Dynamo. You can do a lot with them. There is a uh, Dynamo blog about that on the Dynamo website about the list at level. And there's a really good piece on uh, this website, this uh, blog, uh, Revit Dynamite and Ammo. This is about replication guides. This one's a little bit old. So it might not be exactly accurate about current Dynamo, but are in those two, they're quite detailed. You'll get a really good grip of how to use those two features. A um, little bit controversial. Um, future scripting language. There is design script, which is what is in code blocks, and that's what Dynamo is built on. So all Dynamo nodes get written to design script and then executed. If you've been using Dynamo a bit, you've probably found Python nodes where you can type some Python code and have that run. Um, but also, you can use C Sharp, which is a, um, a first class language. Um, now, it used to be that it was quite hard to write C Sharp because you had to write the code in a separate uh, environment and then compile it and then so on. But now, uh, there is Dimitar Venkov's Dynamic C Sharp Interpreter. It's a downloadable package. Bit of a mouthful, but the great thing is, if you're used to using uh, the GIF works, if you're used to using Python, then it's just like uh, working in Python. You've got an editor, you can type in your C Sharp, and you save this. This is just a note at the door bus. You can save this on, on disk, and then the uh, give it a note, read the script, interpret it, and drive it live. So you're not having to compile anything, you're just writing code, saving it, it's running fantastic. And for me, uh, the nice thing is, again, controversial, but design script's great, but the only place you can use design script is inside Dynamo. Um, Python's great, but there's not a great deal of documentation around. Um, it's a fairly basic script editor. Uh, C Sharp, you can go a lot of places with C Sharp. If you're really interested in scripting and coding for Revit, for Dynamo, then learning C Sharp is probably not, well, I'm yes. it's not a bad idea. There's a lot of power, and you can go an awful, awful lot of different places with it. That's particularly with Dimitar's nice note. That's me done, and it's Sam with some more. Again, these tips and tricks kind of follow the theme of my presentation, and they're quite geometry orientated, so I'll spin through them as fast as I can in case. Yeah. OK, 
Okay. Has anyone heard of an ISO line? Yes? No? Really cool. Um, if we import a surface from Revit that we've modeled, and we want to query exactly um, a parametric point on it, we can use surface get ISO line. And we can specify the U and the V and add a number slider to query what this surface look, looks like along with the U. It's horizontal representation there, or V is vertical representation. And we'll plug in the V and show you what the other end looks like. And we can just assess that shape along this line so we can look at how efficient it is. Uh, interestingly, if we feed a list of 0 and 1 into the ISO direction, we can make a grid. And we can start to assess very, very simply what a rationalized version of this shape would actually look like. We can take around uh, there, normalize divisions of said shape. Using a number slider, you can quite easily see whether or not the thing that you're making is pragmatic or ridiculous. It's quite an easy visual uh, aid for subdivision of surfaces. That's anything that you get into. Very, very good. That's a built in stuff. Um, number two is a similar idea, but instead of using um, regular surface subdivisions, we're going to use points to assess our subdivisions. So we specify some X points and some Y points. And they exist from minus 35,000 to 35,000 and from 25,000 at minus 25,000 to 25,000. We have a vector in the x, which effectively draws a straight line up from there. And we have a vector in the y, which draws a straight line up from there. And we can use cool nodes of geometry to intercept or chop this surface up into its constituent parts. Which we'll see in a second when I unfreeze the node. Uh, this is a much more computationally heavy version of subdivision of surfaces, but it's a very accurate one. So we can specify exactly where this point see with these lines thrown up, they chop the surface very, very rationally. So it's useful for getting non-normalized non uh, distribution on the surface. So maybe useful, maybe not. Uh, the last two that I've got, one is um, Eduardo P. Rocker, I believe it's called, very active on Dynamo forums a couple of years ago, and he has a detailed profile node, which allows us to draw on a detailed View at zero zero, it's important to know that it has to be zero on the view. Um, any kind of profile that we want to just straight up bring into Dynamo. So I'm sketching a bit of a mullion profile here, nice and straightforward. And I want to use this for lock I want to get it in relative to zero really quickly so I know exactly where it is. I can select these elements, and voila, this pops up as a polycurve. It's a patched polycurve, so it's a perfect thing for making extrusions from. Really, really robust. We move it up and down in the view, and it moves relative to the zero on the dynamo. So zero is quite positive. The uh, final one is a similar uh, kind of intervention. This is from Archilab, and it shows polycurve by profile family type. Now, if you draw a profile, it's often in what's always in the family, and you never get to see it again. This is a cool way of visualizing the sketch geometry. So we can select family type, which you can't see at the moment, but I'm selecting that one. And I'm piping the family type into family type, running it, and you can see that it's, at, it's, it's extracting the sketch geometry from within that particular family and projecting it at zero into Dynamo. So we can then use that for all kinds of good stuff. Uh, it breaks it down into polycurve and each of the segments of the polycurve. Uh, I think that's me for geometry. So, okay. Thank you.